for my lighting and my camera, it's literally just a focal length of 80, because I knew I wanted to be closer in, um, almost like a portrait somewhat uh, uh, lensing. And then on my camera itself, I have uh, depth of field, but I have that off on purpose right now. I have exposure. So right now you're not seeing anything because I have turned off all my lights. So I'm just going to turn on my environment first. Um, you can see that the scattering just looks very little. And I have an area light that when I turn this on, you'll see it's just giving a very, very subtle hit right here. And what I like to do at first is actually, if you press this button, it will turn it into clay mode. And this is purposely set up this way. I'm using Asus. Um, so things are really, really dark on purpose at the beginning. And then I'm just bringing things up bit by bit. I have this eye glint, and this is uh, just trying to hit specifically this area of the eye. So it just gives it a bit of a shine when it becomes back there. You can see it just came on a little bit. I have this dome light, which is literally from HDR Haven. It's nothing special. It's literally just this one called Lotter Waterfall. You can get it for free. Um, I just used the 2K version because I knew I was going to be really out of uh, uh, depth of field. I took the saturation down and gamma a little bit. And then I have a sun and sky. Uh, let's just add in a little bit more influence and that's pretty much it for my lighting so you know it's not really that complex and then also what I did was I added in a cloner with a few different spheres and they each have displacers on them just to roughen them up a bit and in here I set my cloner to random I was using those three randomly and put that in, and this is literally not the rain I use for animation, but just so I could sort of get an idea of what the scene will feel like. Uh, so then when I turn on my depth field, that's sort of giving me the sense and I knew sort of the depth and, you know, if I get out of my camera, sort of how much rain I'll need and the depth, and, you know, the distance from one another, just so I, understand what I was trying to achieve. Once I was happy with that, you know, I could just turn off the clay and literally it would be a whole nother tutorial to break down the actual shader of the frog. And luckily enough, I've already done that. So if you just go on the link below in the, uh, in the, in the, in the channel, you'll see there's a link to that, uh, video, which is going to be the black light, um, tutorial that we did uh, a few months ago, I believe. So the only thing I've done differently with this one is I'm using the day. I'm just opening up just to give you a sense of it. It might seem really complex, but really it's just one material with uh, one ramp, various color corrects on it, and then some noises. And this sort of is like the master noise, if you will, that will essentially link this up so if I was to go connect to output you'll see that this is the noise that sort of controls you know where each thing goes and then I'm just simply using that to separate where you know you get the different colors and then inside the material itself all I've done really is it's, you can see there's just a little backlight translucency. I'm using the same colors that are coming from that ramp. And then I believe I added a bit of coating and that's sort of what's giving me that sort of wet look. So if I go to zero, you'll see it gets slightly, uh, slightly drier uh, just here. But when I go back to 0.9, it will get sort of like a slick feel. And, you know, that's pretty much the biggest thing I did for that um, shader for the frog in terms of changing it from what I originally made. Um, again, you could go here and you could up the backlight. So, you know, you could fake, you know, like it almost feels like subsurface, but it's way faster. Um, and it just turned out that it was faster to do it this way than I didn't end up using actual subsurface or anything in the shader. Um, and then the next thing I did was this eye 
shader, which is a little different than what I had in the previous tutorial. Again, I was just using this project for, you know, myself to, to make something, but I also wanted to learn things at the same time. So, you know, this eye, I should get in a little closer, is uh, basically a procedural setup. And I was trying to match somewhat a reference I had. And, you know, just like everything, you should always have some references on, you know, whether it's your second screen or somewhere nearby. But the biggest thing was me making sure that no matter what I was doing, it felt somewhat realistic. So this is actually the reference I was using. I uh, just found it online and, you know, I just really zoomed in and just tried to analyze what each aspect was. And, you know, the biggest thing I could realize was like, oh, OK, I'm going to need multiple noises covering with some spots around it and then a large circle that sort of had a rim that was a little noisy and then uh, sort of like a edge around that. So what I ended up doing was um, this is the reason why I love pure ref is, you know, you, you open up this program and it will always stay wherever you tell it to versus if I click here, see everything disappeared, but I can click here and pick um, the mode to be, I'm just right clicking and picking mode always on top. Now, when I click, it's always going to stay on top versus if you have something in a preview like this, it's going to disappear. So I'm just going to bring this in here and zoom in. And I literally just had this up and I was just, you know, breaking down as much as possible this eye. So, you know, the first thing I did was I had a bass noise and um, let's just go here. Smaller. I'm just going to quickly go over this just so we're not laboring it too much. And you can see that this noise, uh, you know, it might seem grainy right now because I'm, I'm zooming in, but in my other scene, I was, you know, sharper. I mean, I could. Well, let's do this then. I'm going to duplicate the camera, turn off, flip the field, and then let's just zoom in. There we go. Now we're here. I don't need to be 500, to 100. And we can just look at this. So you can see I was just trying to break down, and this is literally just one noise. I just ended up with dense, and I changed the scale, and was just playing around as much as possible to sort of get these settings. Let's just move this over here. And then once I had that sort of set, I created another one, and this was uh, a stuple, again with, you know, I'm just playing with these uh, settings here in the cycles, the high, low, brightness, and just to try to get that to feel sort of like this noisiness. And the reason why I'm showing them individually is it'll make sense in a second as, you know, once I have this ramp, you can see it's sort of this edge. And then I had another one and finally another to make the circle. And literally I'm just using a ramp set to circular and I had the noise frequency uh, just to, you know, make it feel a little distorted. I could up that more so you can see it, like, just, it can get more distorted. And in a color layer, all I'm doing is putting them together, you know, just like you would in, say, Photoshop. So if I just have just this layer, it's literally this, and then I'm just multiplying one noise on top of another noise on top of another noise. And this last, last one's an add, so I could get this rim. And for this frog, I decided to go uh, horizontal as opposed to vertical, just for the setup. And using that, this is basically the blend for the two materials. So I just have a gold, and I just pushed a bit of um, a diffuse into it, so it would be like this normally, um, just to make it a little brighter. And then I just literally have a black that's slick. And once I put those into a blend, you know, it's just going to use one or the other. So using this 
blend, I will get the two materials together. And that's how I made the eye. So, you know, it's just trying to do some stuff procedurally. Because, um, again, I didn't have this type of shader or anything set up before, so it gave me sort of the look I needed and felt pretty realistic. So once I had that, uh, let's get out of this camera. And then back to this. All I have is literally, again, the, uh, you know, pixel materials that it comes with on Megascan, so... Again, all I'm doing is bringing in them regularly, and then I have negative 0.5 and 0.5 for the new uh, min and max ranges. I have my albedo, and then for every texture, basically, when there's a roughness, I'm changing um, that setup with a ramp, because if I map this in, it will seem drier. And all I'm doing with the ramp is simulating as if it was slick like it was wet. So that's the biggest thing that's happening on all the, you know, items. And you can see this leaf, you know, if I was to turn off this cloth surface, it gives me back sort of the textures and setup. So if I switch this one from that ramp, you'll see it'll be a much drier look. And all I'm doing is, you know, trying to make everything feel as wet as possible for the rain. And this is, again, the cloner rain I had in there, and I... The shader is supremely simple. It's quite literally the preset of water. And all I did was go preset water. And pretty much had it all. The only thing I needed to change was in the subsurface, I added a bit of translucency and scattering because if I was to show you what the regular water was, so I go custom, just change this for a second. I go water and pipe that in, um, you'll see that it has a little bit of a difference. I think it's just more um, geared, you know, it's got the dispersion in there, um, but it doesn't have any transmittance. So when I did this, I ended up taking out the dispersion and then adding a bit of color. And if I up that, you'll sort of see like it gets more extreme, but it's just a subtle, I wanted to have like a little cooler bluish tint. And then I think the only thing I did is turned off cold dim internal reflections. Um, Cause that's what it would normally be. And I just turn that off. It just adds a few more reflections. So again, this is the rain that I use just purely as a demo for myself. Like, hey, can I make this look you know, how I want it to. And then the next thing was figuring out how to simulate the rain and make it fall. And, you know, that's now going to be the next thing. So once I was happy with this and I felt like I had a good, I was in a good spot, um, I decided then to essentially, I picked all the object I need, all the objects I needed. So it was the leaf, frog, ranch. And then I just literally went to export, limbic and then i actually did a full animation so it was the full sequence so i had to say start frame and end frame so like this was 360. Uh, so i just did that and then i just went okay and just let it run and then i had my limbic file set up so then i could then go uh into houdini and move on to the next section